What's going on there, Duelist? I'm back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. Today it's going to be Sky Strikers for the new ban list under April 2019. The new list has Kagari at 1, and I think Sky Strikers is definitely going to take a backseat to Thunder Dragons or Thunder Dragon Danger, depending on what variant uh, ends up being the most popular, the best version of the deck, and however that deck ends up evolving. And the Salomon Great deck, which really only had Lady Debug uh, as its only hit, which wasn't really even that impactful in my personal opinion. But I think Sky Strikers being not only the most represented deck and probably just the most successful deck based on what we've seen tournament wise in terms of representation, in terms of tournament wins, it's just been the most consistent deck and while it's one of those decks that doesn't necessarily have the highest power, it really draws its power from being able to take opponents monsters with cards like Shark Cannon, with its Widow Anchors, etc. And really the fact that it has such a high degree of uh, consistency as well as recovery and resiliency in the long run is what made this deck, deck so powerful and losing two copies of Kagari really ensured that this deck would have its recovery handicapped a significant amount like I can't even explain how much having one Kagari hurts but I do think a lot of people are gonna try and still play this deck I do think it still is a viable deck I don't think it's necessarily going to be better than uh, the other decks, but we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, uh, when you guys are watching this video, it's going to be literally the you know the one day after the ban list has dropped, and it's not even legal yet. So this is uh, a deck that I was kind of putting messing around putting together. Um, obviously, I haven't had time to test it because the list just dropped today when I'm actually filming this video. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, maybe like a, pr uh, a template list that I've kind of been messing around with. One thing I do want to stress is, well, no, I'll kind of just show you guys in the list, is that you guys can really just use this as a template and kind of go off it based on whatever the format is. Of course, I can't predict what the trends are going to be moving forward completely. I, I can't 100% be right on everything. But I do think that, uh, you know, playing this deck traditionally like, like, it, like it has been this past format or so, or format and a half with just tons of hand traps and just hoping that that uh, consistency and, and recovery is going to get you there isn't going to be as impactful and the reason I say that is is because without having that recovery you know there's not really much use to you know drag on the game with hand traps to try and drag on the game with you know trying to go back and forth in your opponent you know in a war of attrition that's really not advantageous to you because you already lost so much recovery so once you get through that one Kagari unless you have like multiple magnet reverses you know some people are gonna be trying that or really anything else because unlike the OCG we don't have three pot of avarice so we're not gonna be able to cycle through all those link monsters to get back those Kagari so that that is a big issue and uh, I definitely think it's something to be accounted for so I don't think hand traps you know a full a fully loaded package of t all the different hand traps is gonna be um, the best solution to this particular format at least for this deck and Really, all in all, it's like if you if you're taking those hand traps or, or really just cards that that are like one for one based in your control in your already control deck, you know your war of attrition isn't going to be that great. You don't have recovery as a follow up in a lot of those cases if you're playing from behind. And if you're starting off, you just got to hope that you get into Ray or whatever you know combination of cards that eventually get you into your you know Ray Shizuku whatever else you might need at that given point. So. We're gonna get into it. If you guys happen to enjoy this video, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, make sure you guys check out the Patreon link down below. And make sure you guys also check out all the other social media outlets down below and check out Imperium Duelist. I'd very much appreciate it. We're gonna get into it. Uh, first and foremost, the standard is Triple Ray. This doesn't really change. This is the most important card in the deck, in my opinion, right now, in terms of just being, you know, the, the card you just need to get into, like, more than ever now. Like, you need to get in this card because it gets you into Shizuku, and Shizuku allows you to extend the game. Like, it allows you to get into whatever you don't have at that given point. So, uh, three Ray. And then the only hand trap I'm actually playing in the deck uh, right now is just Triple Ash. Um, I don't really think, like, like right now, early on in the format, it's going to be hard to tell which hand traps are going to be the most advantageous. But I think at the beginning of a format, uh, I've never been a fan of just t tossing in a ton of hand traps in any deck. I like to keep my deck as uh, utility based as possible and minimize hand traps because there can be a lot of matchups where they're just dead. And Ash is just the best one overall because it just covers the most cards in general in the game. So um, I don't really feel like running any other hand traps. I don't think it's really that advantageous as I mentioned. The more hand traps you have in your hand, it means that you have less cards to potentially get into Ray and less cards to play as the game goes on. Like yeah, you can halt some kind of combo deck strategy, but what's the point if your follow up is kind of mediocre and normally you'd be able to win if you could drag on the game with multiple Gagaris and so on and so forth but you're not really able to do that right now so that just means that you're not going to be winning as many of those grind out games as you normally would be winning so I, I don't think it's as advantageous to be playing as many hand traps in this particular build right now so those are the only ones I'm currently using for the spells all the spells are really all the same for the most part it's one drones uh, triple engage of course it didn't get hit along with uh, Triple Widow Anchor. These are you know, all equally important. 
Um, I think at this point, the way that the format is and the way that, you know, Kagari got hit, you 100% need to be getting into your Ray. So basically playing a deck that just takes advantage of multi-roll uh, is the most important thing. Like you definitely need to be maxing out on multi-roll in three area zeros if you already aren't. Um, I just think it's super important for this deck right now. So, and then the double terraforming to get into those. Uh, the one ofs are one Eagle Booster, one Shark Cannon, one Afterburners, and one Jamming Waves, and one Hercules Base. Hercules Base. If you weren't already playing this, you should definitely play it now. Um, you need this. I don't think this is like. I, I honestly was playing this before if I would have been playing this deck competitively at an event, simply because I think this is really good with cards like Topologic uh, Bomber Dragon being able to deal a ton of damage in time, being able to just have a lot of cool nifty tricks, and uh, you know, just having a card that, that, that puts you back in the game during that grind game is really useful. So these are all really good. Um, I think these are a little bit weaker right now against the top heavy meta decks, but I think it's like against the Thunder Dragons and Salamon Greats, uh, but they're definitely good against everything else like the True Dracos, the, you know, whatever other decks you might be playing out there. Um, these are really good, and I actually think I would want to play multiple copies of these only in the side, which I think is a little bit advantageous right now. I definitely think Dracos is going to um, be one of those decks that, that really hard counters a lot of those top decks out there, uh, depending on you know how you're playing it. And, and I think that that's a deck that I would prepare as a rogue deck. I think it's a deck I've been hearing people, all the top players, uh, and all the tournament reports, everyone that I've heard pretty much says I played like a bunch of Strikers, you know, some Thunder Dragons here or there, some Salmon Greats here or there. Um, depending on you know the the, the matchups, but usually I hear people saying anywhere between like two and three Draco decks uh, is what they play in a long you know in a in a, in, a, uh, um, in an entire tournament report. I just think especially like mid rounds and like early rounds, you're definitely be playing a lot of those. So I think you should definitely prepare for like an entire tournament, and I think it's advantageous to uh, have access to those at any given point. But game one, you don't really need multiples. Uh, for just standard consistency is double Foolish Barrel Goods, one Metal Foes Fusion. Uh, the one upstart goblin and then of course the one reinforcement of the army uh, a card that I think you could make an argument for that you don't like these next what nine cards are really just my choices these are all flex spots I would say uh, but the first one is kind of a unique one a lot of people have been talking about this if Gagari gets hit or whatever else is magnet reverse now I could see people playing anywhere from like zero to three of this I, I think one is more than sufficient <laughs> I don't really, like, I, I only have one right now, so I haven't been able to test it uh, too extensively. I could see two being okay. I don't think I would play three simply because you don't want to have multiples of this in your opening hand, and it's not really like a combo card. It's really only a card that puts your Kagari back, which is great. If you guys are unfamiliar with it, it's just a quick play spell that allows you to pick a machine or rock monster that's either banished or in your grave, and you can't that you can't normal summon or set, and then you special summon it, and with only a single Kagari, you can do that because Kagari coincidentally is a machine so you're actually able to do that you can just magnet reverse bring it back so it's really just another way to get Kagari out um, I don't really want to see too many of this early on early on in the game in my opinion you really just want to make sure you get to Ray and that's your goal after that you know whatever happens happens try and you know win your war of attrition try and uh, you know mitigate all your opponents plays with your standard widow anchors and some of the other cards that we're running in this deck and that's really, that's really what you just want to do with this. So I, I don't really want to play multiples of this. Um, and it was definitely a card that I, I couldn't play multiples of because I wanted to stay at 40 with this deck. So um, Magna Reverse, I think it's a cool card, but I definitely wouldn't play a ton of this. It's just it's just a cool new pick that allows you to get into Kagari. Uh, three Called by the Graves. Now, I don't think Hand Traps are as necessarily good in this deck to play. They can be impactful against other decks. But with only one Kagari and Thunder Dragons and Salmon Grates probably being the two top decks, uh, I think that... Called by the Grave is really impactful against those decks, especially in those like grind games where you're going back and forth, just being able to banish their Jaguars or uh, whatever hits the Grave. And then anytime those decks are hand trapping you, uh, you know, with your one Kagari and so on and so forth, you definitely want to be able to have the access to Called by the Grave to hit it and just play out the game. And, and really, it's just a versatile card. Like I, I don't, I don't tend to like this card in a lot of decks, but I think I think in this deck it's really not that bad, especially this this upcoming format. <laughs> Uh, next is a card I actually was running double twin over or double MST over in the main deck But I recently replaced it uh, moved it from the side. I think just after a little bit of speculation I think that uh, double super poly is a card that you should definitely be maining in this deck It's a spell card number one for obvious reasons. So it has great synergy with the deck, but the fact that Salmon Grates and Thunder Dragons are probably gonna be the two top decks right now means that super poly is Super useful against those decks whether you're bringing out violent chimera or the Predator plant guy um, just means that you have a lot of options. Your opponent can't respond to a lot of the different things you're doing. I'm sure there's other options you could play. I just think that because this card is inherently syner uh, synergetic with your deck, 
and it's good against the two top decks in a lot of different scenarios both going second and potentially going first depending on how you're you know you're using this card most of the time it's better going second um i just think all in all it's it's pretty advantageous to play this card it definitely sucks against a lot of the other decks but uh, in my opinion if you are playing it's like the top meta decks uh, which i would assume is those those being the most common decks then you definitely want to have this at the very least you might want to side this if you're not main decking it if you're going to like a regional or something i probably would just side these and play like twin twister or uh probably, probably like twin twister in the main deck just because it's uh it's good if you happen to play against a lingering mirror match um or really like if you play against like rogue stuff like paint uh, uh what is it prank kids or if you happen to play against uh you know Drake, true draco really just anything else that has back row in it and then the last card in the main deck is triple there can be only one again the same concept uh, applies with this card if thunder dragons and uh, salmon greats are going to be the, the, the two top decks this card inherently hurts both those decks and to some capacity a lot of other decks depending on what deck you play against uh this card can be extremely useful uh really now what the deck in my opinion with sky strikers has become it's going to be a not just a deck that kind of like cycles through everything it needs it's really just going to be a, a deck where you get to ray right you get to whatever you need you get the pieces that you need but then you just sit on either like shizuku or you potentially your one kagari or whatever else you need but in most cases like a shizuku and you just try and control the game from there try and control the board from there and hope that there can only be one gets you there because this card allows you to also break boards unlike stuff like summon limit which isn't really as uh powerful going second because this can actually force your opponent to get rid of their stuff um summon limit it's only really good going first so this is good going first and second I could also see players choosing to run like the Solemns potentially in the main deck, maybe like a couple strikes, maybe a, a Solemn Warning and a Solemn Judgment, maybe even in the side for, for going first. Um, but I just think this is both good going first and second. So if I were running the Solemn package, I'd probably just side it. Um, strike isn't bad going second, um, but definitely like the Solemn Judgment, Solemn Warning stuff is uh, significantly better going first. But I, I think this deck should just be played and in, in, in as far as like its style goes, I think you should just be trying to do exactly what you want to do in that you get a monster out, you sit on it, if they clear it, you get something else out, and then you know just keep cycling through all your cards and hope that all your, uh, your counter cards get you there and, and you can hopefully uh, extend the game to not just win in a war of attrition, but win in a war of control. So yeah, uh, I kind of just opted to play a lot more cards that were a little bit more utility based than just hand traps. So. Uh, for the extra deck, uh, of course the one token here, the one Sky Striker token. Uh, the extra deck still the same, is three Shizukus, three Hayates, and then right now I currently only have one Kaina in here. I, I might bump this to two, I was running two, but I need to make room for the fusions for the Super Polys, so uh, just one Kaina, and of course the single copy of Kagari now since it's limited to one. Uh, for the other cards, I'm playing the one Phoenix. The one Hita, the one Ningirsu, and then the one Topologic Bomber Dragon and one Boral Sword. I don't even know if I like Boral Sword all that much right now, to be honest. Um, I might cut this for like a Unicorn. Unicorn's one card I'm not, I don't have room for in the extra deck. Um, most of the time you can just use Ningirsu as a Unicorn. Like you can just go like Hita and then into this, or you can just like take their stuff with Widow and then use like Shizuku or whatever else to make Ningirsu. So I feel like Unicorn, you don't need it as much. One thing I would maybe consider is also putting in, putting back in the Clara Rushka because I'm not main decking Veilers, uh, and that means that you have a little bit of a weaker matchup if you happen to play against like a, a single co like a single Altergeist matchup, um, and they happen to have like Secret Villages, which I just don't think Altergeist is as good right now because Sky Striker is a little bit weaker, and that was one of their uh, favorable matchups. And I just think all in all, it's not as good of a deck. So um, I definitely feel like uh, if you do happen to play against it, you'll have the Clara Rushka, but it's really not all that needed. You might play like one Altergeist, but you never know. People might try and play it now. Uh, because they want to try some other options because the format it's still relatively similar It's just this you know all the decks are a little bit more handicapped than anything else They're not like wild bonkers super consistent and just killing you every time and then the last two extra cards are the Salmon great violent chimera for super poly and the starving venom fusion dragon you could also play the uh, preta plant uh, whatever the other one is the The one that has like the counter and the negation. I forget its name all the time, but um you can play the other one the only thing is is that this one has a little bit more versatility and it just requires two darks, whereas the other one, if your opponent doesn't have a fusion, you're not going to be able to do much. And if you're playing against someone smart, um, I feel like the fact that they know that Super Poly is now at two, it's definitely going to be a card. They, they don't necessarily always want to leave those fusions. And if you're playing against like Thunder Dragons, whether it's Pure or the Danger Variant, um, if they're smart, I feel like they probably wouldn't leave Colossus uh, against you or like it, it, on the off the chance that they just get blown out by... Um, 
blown out by Super Poly, they could just do whatever else. And I'm sure they'll have some other crazy line of play where it doesn't really even matter right now. It'll still probably be like one of the better combo based decks, especially with Danger, because um, they can still just turbo through everything with, with uh, Saryuja. But um, I think this is a little bit better in that regard, just because it has type coverage against the Orca strategy, because you know they can still go Bardish and make all their darks and do whatever else um, without necessarily having a fusion on the field. So you'll have you, you'll be able to do this against any of the other decks that leave darks on the field, but that don't leave a fusion. But the decks that do leave a fusion, you'll be able to make this or whatever else you need. So I don't really think the other Predator Plants needed. Um, its effect is better in my opinion than this, but this definitely has its application and then the Chimera is just for the, uh, as I mentioned, for the Salmon Greats. Uh, side deck, again, this is all bound to change, but this is just what I initially built. Uh, of course, the standard Triple Panker Tops. This is pretty much a side deck staple in every deck. Not really much to say there. Uh, against uh, Orcist and Thunder Dragons, uh, still the Triple Lancey. I think this is still really, really important. I think those decks can still get handicapped so easily with this. I think Orcus is still really good. Yeah, they don't have like their uh, like all, like the Azathoth plays and like the Dark Warrior stuff with like the PK and whatnot. But uh, they, just being able to do this against them just stops them from like they literally just can't play. And I think there will be some hybrid variant with, of that deck, or maybe with like the Danger stuff that, that, that arises that uh, people utilize. So um, this card is still super, super impactful. And then potentially that deck might also be useful. Is uh, three Swords of Concealing Light. This is probably one of the better answers. Uh, I don't really have like Kaijus or anything on the side. I just don't think they're as useful against those decks. <coughs> uh, I think Swords uh, really just gives you that two turn clock that you really need. Um, and it's a spell at that, so it's it, it's not horrible. Like there, there's other matchups you could potentially use this up against, but mainly against the Thunder Dragon matchup. I just think uh, you want to have something that you can play and then just hope to get into whatever pieces you need to out their board slowly but surely over the next two turns. Uh, next is two shared rides. I don't think the mirror match is going to be as prevalent, um, but it is something you could face. Uh, it's still definitely a viable deck. It's also good against the Salmon Great matchup, and really, it's, there's not much else I'd really have to say about shared ride. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the last couple cards are double twin just for back row decks, and then the random picks that I just kind of threw in here as fillers slash flex spots are another copy of Afterburners and Jamming Ways. I feel early on in the format, uh, especially if you're going to like any locals, regionals, whatever. Um, even YCS's, a lot of people start to run like really weird rogue strategies, even if the format is, I wouldn't say more or less defined, but the format isn't too heavily changed if you really think about it that way. It's just like, like Strikers lost the recovery, Thunder Dragons lost certain lines of play because of Sork, uh, same thing with Orcus. People can't as a thought you like during your turn anymore because of the rank up launch. But beyond that, um, everything else is pretty much unchanged if that makes sense. So. Uh, people will still be playing a lot of their same decks. There's still going to be rogue decks out there. This is These are both fantastic against Dracos with multi-roll, which I think is um, definitely going to be a top contender among those decks and deck that you could just get blown out against. Uh, yeah, I just I just think these two cards uh, against those decks are useful, but they kind of just suck against the top decks. It's okay against the Salmon Great matchup, but um, I don't know. It really depends uh, what variant they're playing and, and the utility picks that they're choosing to use. Afterburner is probably a little bit better against that deck in my personal experience. Uh, but yeah. That is the deck. Uh, of course, it's all bound to change. Literally, I'm making this like a couple hours after the ban list. So, yeah, I just kind of threw it together. Kind of, well, I had most of the list put together. Really, all I had to change was the Kagari, some of the main deck choices, and some of the side deck choices. Um, but beyond that, most of the deck is relatively uh, unchanged. I think Magnet versus is definitely a really cool addition to the deck. Um, being able to just bring back Kagari is really, really neat. Um, I might try two of this if I can get a second one, but I heard that this card right now, people tried to buy it out on like TCG Player, it's like 50 bucks. Uh, honestly guys, just take my word for it, don't buy it. If you have these and you have just extra of these, sell them off. Like, I only have one, I'm probably just gonna list this one on TCG Player, because I think it's absurd that people are trying to charge like 50 bucks for this. Like, even if it's from like a weird Kaibo, whatever side set, like, that's absurd. I would never pay more than like a couple dollars for this card. Like, that that's just insanity, I'm sorry, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, it's nowhere near that good, and in general, I just think it's, uh, it's, there's definitely tons of other cool options. Like you definitely don't necessarily, like you don't need like two to three of that. Um, maybe two, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to see where this deck goes and how it evolves um, and how people try and adapt to uh, the loss of uh, two of their Kagaris. So that's it. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Sky Strikers. Do you guys think they are significantly hit? And uh, you know, they're definitely gonna take a backseat like uh, to Thunder Dragons and th Danger Thunder Dragons and the Salmon Great deck as I thought it would and I do still think it will. Or do you guys think this will still be uh, the top deck? I mean, I, I think it definitely has potential, but I definitely don't think it's better than the other two decks right now out there. So, uh, yeah, comment down below with your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys next time. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos from me. There's like 80% of you guys that watch these videos that aren't subscribed, so please do so. 
Make sure you guys check out my Patreon merch down below for the channel and the Imperium Duelist promo code link so you guys can get 10% off sleeves and mats on their site. I'll see you guys next time. Twist signing off. See you guys next time.